You are now tuned in to The Breakdown with Carlos Cote. I knew I was never going to be a Beatle, <laughs> but there was a chance that I could be Jermaine Jackson. Michael is a great singer, but Jermaine is a little better, better singer than Michael and Ballas. Now this is the other big brother, right? Jermaine. Jermaine, there you go. <laughs> I saw Imagine all of them with Michael leading, yeah, mm -hmm. leading the songs, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jermaine's a very good leader, too. Jermaine, it's kind of hard to tell which one's the better singer, but I think Jermaine may be just a little bit better ballad singer than Michael is. Welcome to The Breakdown. I am your host, Carlos Cote, and today we're breaking down Jermaine Jackson, the unsung. Now, Jermaine is the influence uh, to a lot of great, a lot of great musicians and recording artists such as uh, Babyface and um, Marcus Miller and Victor Wooten, who I feel is one of the greatest bass players, musicians that the world has ever seen. Also, he's the influence to the likes of, what's that brother from uh, Guns N' Roses? Um, Slash. He's the influence to Slash, uh, Lenny Kravitz. Just, just so many uh, great artists. And Jermaine also had a hand in uplifting the careers of the R&B group from the 70s Switch, which was led by uh, uh, the Barge brothers, uh, Bobby DeBarge and Tommy and whatnot. And he also had a hand in starting, upstarting Whitney Houston's career. And Jermaine Jackson, now this is my personal pronouncement, is the one of the greatest male vocalist smoothest on point just just all around vocalist one of the greatest vocalists of the 20th century and a lot of people don't recognize his gift his talent due to the uh being eclipsed by his younger brother and whatnot who Michael was very influenced by Jermaine's singing and whatnot uh, back in the Jackson Five days. However, you know, you had a lot of great vocalists in the 80s, like Freddie Jackson, who has hits for days. Um, he was a great, great singer. You had Peebo Bryson, who was a great, great singer in the 70s, 80s, 90s, whatnot. But they don't get the credit that they deserve and you have so many other recording artists from the 70s and 80s male vocalists male r&b vocalists who are some serious singers that don't get the credit that they deserve and jermaine jackson leads that class because just try to 
up, stirred your mind of the hits of Jermaine, such as Don't Take It Personal and uh, Let's Get Serious and uh, Do What You Want. Uh, for, forget all the hits. You have to focus on his ballads, his slow songs. To me, I think that was his PowerPoint, was his slow songs, such as um, All Because of You and First You Laugh and Then You Cry and Castles of Sand. That is a well, well put together, well composed uh composition you know the words is just so masterful you don't equate sex with love and it, it, that's just a, a, a nice 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 song um he also had uh he did the remake of tyrone davis hit the great vocalist from the 70s and 60s tyrone davis uh he, he remade his song can i change my mind um, Jermaine just had so many, many great, great songs. Um, but to prove, to just to display his greatness as a vocalist, check out Jermaine Jackson live singing Autumn Leaves. That right there is a prime example as to why the late great Joe Jackson, Mr. Joe Jackson, had always said when he was asked, who was the best singer out of your uh, group? And he always said, Jermaine. Mind you that Joe is the one who discovered the Jackson 5. Joe is the one who groomed the Jackson 5. Joe is the one who taught them the dance steps, the science of music, the science of show business. Joe is the one who taught Tito and Jermaine how to play their instruments. Taught them all. It was Joe Jackson and his uh, opinion should be highly respected because nobody knew the Jackson 5, knew the Jacksons better than Joe. And if you go back, if you can be fortunate enough to listen to some of the Jackson 5's live songs and listen to Jermaine sing live and playing the bass, keep in mind through 6970, notice how through that period that Jermaine and Tito was still playing the music live and dancing at the same time. That that takes so much mental strength along with not not necessarily the physical part of it, but the mental capacity you have to have and the focus you have to have to be able to play your notes, be able to keep those dance steps, and to be able to uh, keep them lyrics. So he had three things going on at one time. And I was listening to 
Jermaine sing, um, I found that girl live in Chicago from 1971, I think it was. And I was fortunate that somebody allowed me to look at the video. And it, 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 it's, it's clear that all they did was just do music. That is very clear. All they did was eat, sleep, you know, music. That's that's it. That's it. It's no I mean he 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 is so he is very, very he is a very, 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 very singular singer and also just such a dynamic uh I can't I can't express how great he is as a vocalist. Even in his younger years when he had that raspy type voice and then it grew into like a smooth, softer type, Marvin Gaye type uh, energy, if you will. And around that time in the late 70s, Jermaine was so heavy in the studio, just playing all the instruments, playing a bunch of instruments, the harmonica, the drums, piano, everything. And... One of the things I think he did as a as a mistake I think he made was leaving his brothers walking out on his brothers when they was about to have a live show. They was going to go do a show, and he walked out on them. And it's a good thing they left the porch light on them, porch light on for him to come back because it was very clear that Motown, Barry Gordy had sabotaged his career because he had some great material, but they did not promote him. He was under the uh, illusion that he would one day run Motown and all this old stuff that Barry Gordy sold him, and he just fell for it. And that should be the lesson. That's the beautiful thing about that situation, that that's a jewel, that's a lesson for all to see. Like, you don't turn your back on your day ones. <laughs> I don't care who come into the picture later, you don't turn your back on your day ones. Because most of the time, when you do that, sometimes your day ones, they ain't gonna have no porch light on for you to come back. You 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 left, you stay gone. And um, but that's neither here nor there. Jermaine Jackson, really go check out his material. Really check out his material, like Paradise in Your Eyes, uh, um, You Like Me, Don't You. That is that that really showcases his creative side. That You Like Me, Don't You. Go really, really listen to that record. Um, Jermaine is just so so underestimated. Just such a unsung, and it really shouldn't be like that. You know, he's well respected by great singers like El DeBarge and, you know, like just just great, great singers. Very highly respected by people that's in the entertainment and music industry and whatnot. And um, again, I just want people not to necessarily focus on the bass player because he was a hell of a bass player, but just focus on his vocals. The cat really was bad. He really could sing his ass off. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He was smooth. He was smooth. But uh, with that said, I'm going to leave you in the same way I greeted you in. That is peace. Thank you for listening. And all of a sudden, these arms just grab a hold of me. I'm looking Jermaine Jackson straight in his eyes. He said, I'm proud of you, man. Go do it. You can do this. Close my eyes. Hey! See, we just chopping game right now, you know what I'm saying? I gotta shoot a shout out to the one and only Archbishop Don Magic Wand because he did make this happen. He's been pushing to get my main man Jermaine on the show for the longest, and we finally sitting at the table chopping up some real game. A little bit I did. It's a lot of things he picked up on his own. Without Joe Jackson, Michael Jackson would be as good as he became. Without Joe Jackson, it wouldn't be no Jackson, period. 